We sometimes do need to use a browser when web scraping. We might need to automate something or maybe render some pages out for JavaScript. We would tend to reach for Selenium, Playwright, Puppeteer, maybe, depending on what you're using. And those tools have one thing in common. They're all designed for testing purposes. They're designed for uh, developers to control automatically to test their websites to understand where things are breaking. They're not designed for web scraping. And unfortunately, if we try to force using these tools, we might have some success, but the chances are the telltale signs are going to be given away and we're going to get blocked. So what I'm going to show you in this video is two different options to controlling headless Chrome, both of which are driverless, which basically means you don't download something which controls the driver. It utilizes Chrome in already installed on your machine. And they use the Chrome DevTools protocol. Now, Selenium does and Playwright uses this as well for certain things, but we can utilize it much more. Um, it allows you to have access to everything so you can, you know, run things on the browser, you can do this, you can control it, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, uh, like it shows you here. Now here's the Selenium part, it does say that you can use Chrome DevTools protocol, and it does work. And if you've ever wanted to try this, you can run a Chrome browser like this on your computer, mine's Chromium, remote debugging, and I can connect my Selenium or Playwright to this to run it. Now the way that these other these two tools that I'm going to show you work do a very similar thing, but it's all handled for you, and they're very much web scraping in mind. So a lot of the giveaway signs that are, make you easily blockable are already patched and dealt with. It makes it very, very easy and convenient. I don't scrape at all anymore unless I'm behind a proxy. As I know to scale up my projects, I need to use proxies. So in testing, I try a few different settings and select the best option for that use case. So this video is sponsored by Proxy Scrape, friends of the channel and the proxies that I use myself. We get access to high quality, secure, fast and ethically sourced proxies that cover rates, residential, data center and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the to use or with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. I use a variety of proxies depending on the situation but I'd recommend you start out with residential ones but making sure that you select countries that are appropriate to the site you're trying to scrape as this will give you the best chance of passing anti-bot detection and getting the data you need. Also consider using the sticky sessions and keeping the same proxy for three to five minutes. Either way, it's still only one line of code to add to your project, and then we can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest from there. And also any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need as it doesn't ever expire. So if this all sounds good to you, check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. So let's get on with the project. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is no driver. I'll zoom in a little bit here. <clears throat> now, this is the um, successor to the undetected Chrome driver by the same um, the same developer, and uh, so far it seems to be very, very good. So this is no more web driver, so it utilizes the Chrome already installed on your machine. And what that means is you have that real Chrome. It has everything, there's no control, there's no like automation flags or anything like that, it's all handled properly. And it gives you a very, very easy way to get up, get up and going, uh, and it even allows you to query all the elements, etc., etc. Uh, it gives you some examples here, uh, and I've got one going that I will show you over here. So now one of the things that I want to talk about um, is that first off, these are all async capable, which is pretty useful, but also this one has a very easy and convenient way to grab all the cookies from the page and then pass them into a request session. This is just a convenient helper function, which obviously you could help a function, which obviously you could write yourself, but you know, this just makes it a lot more easier. One line request cookies format is true. Now, one of our other web favorite web scraping tools, which I've talked a lot about recently, curl CFFI is actually based on requests. It's built on top of it. So we can utilize that within this to get a session and then use that to go ahead and do the impersonate at the same time, whilst all while loading the cookies from the browser that we have been gathering here into this session object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this and I'm running this in not um, headless mode so we can see the browser load up, so you'll see it here. And we load the page up and it's you know much quicker than 
selenium or playwright in my opinion so far and there's the cookie so we have you know the client id etc etc and this is the cookie directly from the browser so this would be useful for us to then go ahead and carry on making requests to this site using the cookies as we got them now i'm not saying that this one needs it this is just what i was testing so that's one cool thing that i like about this uh, package so far uh, it seems to be very well um, put together and there's lots of options. Now, one thing that gives us with both of these, and the other one I'll talk about in a second, is access to the CDP object, which has a load of things in it. I'm talking, I mean, look at all of these options of things that you can do. There's so much in here, and it can get a little bit complicated. So if I come back out here, I'll show you. Um, trying to run a proxy with this is a little bit more difficult. I'll show you the proxy one here. Now, this is utilizes the CDP.fetch, and this is the auth required, which you know, if you try to log into something in Chrome, it pops up that little box. It means we can access this and we can put in our username and password, which is down here, which I'm obviously gonna have to blur out now because I forgot that was in there. But you can see that we can utilize these CDP functions and I think it gives us access to almost all of them. And you know, here we are continuing along with the request ID. This is something that I really wanna look more into. I haven't utilized this as much as I think I should have done. I think there's a lot to be learned from this and a lot of cool stuff. Now, the second one I wanna talk about is called Selenium Driverless. Um, and I looked at the documentation for this one. I haven't used this one as much, but it looks very similar and it looks like it has some really cool features in. The first one, which is you know much easier, is it gives you a much easier way to use authenticated proxies, which is very important. You know, it makes it a lot easier for scraping because you do want to use that proxy. Um, but again, it has uh, no driver, so there's no like web automation framework detected uh, issues. It gives you a nice way to select elements and run. And again, it has the, the all the usual Selenium things you would expect. Um, <clears throat> however, I think they're starting to move away from that a little bit. And I want to find the, um, it was in here somewhere, the CDP network interceptor. Here we go. Yeah, so here I found it under the API. So we can intercept requests. Now, this in itself is also very interesting to me because the requests that are being made are being made to the backend API or some other server that has the information that we generally want formatted neatly in JSON that we already want. And if you've watched any of my web scraping videos already, you know that it's that data that I'm always trying to get because it's already formatted. You know, it comes with making, you can make a lot less requests to get it. You don't have to do a load of parsing, much, much easier. So this is the example that I've got here and you have to forgive my um, code editors thrown a fit about all of this. Uh, I didn't bother looking into try and getting it fixed. I just left it. I've got this interceptor here from Selenium Driverless. And what that's going to do is it's going to intercept any request on request. And it's going to say, you know, if there's an API in the request URL, I'm going to print out the headers. And I'll show you why I wanted to print out the headers for this one. Um, I'm going to run pi main. And we'll see it come up here. Now, this one is running through my proxy. Um, and I'm using the mobile proxy for this one, and I found that to be pretty successful. And the reason why I wanted to print out the headers is over here, when I look through it, I should have put rich on this so I could print it out much neater. I always do that, and I don't know why I didn't. Somewhere in here, <laughs> there is our authentication authorization, there we go. So this authorization bearer token is the one that you need to use and pass in when you're making requests to that specific site, so you can make the GraphQL post requests yourself and kind of reverse engineer it a little bit and get that data back. But to get that cookie, you need to make one through the browser uh, to get that uh, uh, authorization header, sorry. So that's definitely uh, something that I found interesting so far. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to, um, I'll show you if I run, um, I think I don't, do I have this? We'll just change this and we'll do, um, we'll get rid of this page and we'll change it to the uh, pixel scan one, which is pretty useful. Pixelscan.net and I'll put in a slightly longer sleep. Give us a chance to actually see what's going on. So let's see how this works with pixel scan. So obviously I'm still gonna get on my headers, uh, but again, you know, 
the comparison is it's loading it loading up in full screen like so you know no automation detective oh obviously 10 seconds isn't enough let me just quickly run that again and i'll uh, be right back i'll make it a bit longer yep so we can see no automation detected it's saying we're using it in incognito window on chrome on linux which is fine we are because you know part of these you want a fresh like user instance of chrome and then delete it afterwards you see, I'm being detected in the right location, you know, because I'm geolocating my proxies. So I'm using a proxy which is in the same location as my machine. So all in all, this is like a pretty cool way of doing it. And so far, this has been really successful for me. Either of these packages, they bas basically do the same thing. Uh, we have access to all of the CDP tools that you might need. Um, that can get a little bit more complicated when you're trying to do these though. So, you know, don't dive straight in and try and figure all this out. Maybe just look for some examples that might work for you. Test out the browsers, see how they work. Um, yeah, and go from there. And obviously, you know, as I said at the beginning, it uses the Chrome version that's installed on your PC. So if you keep your PC up to date, your Chrome's gonna be up to date, it's all gonna be good. I definitely recommend checking out NoDriver and also Selenium Driverless for your browser needs for web scraping. But if you wanna see how I get the information from most of the sites that I scrape, you wanna watch this video here, which doesn't need a browser, although it might do in some cases. Anyway, watch this one.